no country for old white man because there's Mexicans with guns everywhere. In this Dead <laughs> Mexicans with guns. So clearly, it's no country for Mexicans with guns either. Hey man, if, if Javier Bardem is on the scene, it's no country for nobody yeah, except Javier Bardem. <laughs> I know, yeah. Javier Bardem looking like something from a boy band from the 80s walking around with that mop cut looking like Davy Jones from the Monkees. <laughs> well, he's like, he's like, like, like Freddie Prinze from Chico and the Man. See, <laughs> the thing is, is it takes place in 1980. He's supposed to look like that. So oh, he, that's good. That explains everything then. Right? Got that jean jacket on. <laughs> yeah, no, the jean jacket, the and, cars. And, 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 and the tight uh, Wild Wild West pants. Exactly. <laughs> no, this the whole movie takes place in 1980. No, Javier Bardem is a badass in this movie. Let me A uh, little bit about this movie here. I missed some of the beginning, so feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, um, this is a Coen Brothers movie, and it really has been touted as being one of the best movies of the year. And what you have is Josh Brolin. Now he he finds some money, right? Is that what I'm? Am I right here? He stumbles upon what was a drug deal gone bad, okay. gone real Lot, bad, right? Real bad. Lots of dead Mexicans, <laughs> lots of just heroin, and he finds a suitcase full of two million dollars. Some dead pit bulls out there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, yeah, everything. Yeah. Was and um, you can he pretty tell much... it's 1980 because it's only two million dollars. Well, that's true. <laughs> so he snatches his money. He, you know, he's just living in a trailer park with his with his with his wife. He's like, shit, I'm taking this money. Yeah. And the one guy he finds alive is like agua, agua. He's like, yeah, fuck you, ain't no agua out here. He feels bad. He's like, I'll take this dude some water. And this is when he gets caught. Yeah, when he when he tries to do that one act of kindness, it goes back out there. Yeah, he gets he gets discovered, and then that's when the uh, Javier Bardem is on his ass. And I have to say that this is one of the best movies of the year until the last 30 minutes. No, this movie kicks ass for the two th first two thirds of like it. Like the it's, first 90 minutes? It's so good. I mean, it's, it is the best thing the Coen brothers have done in forever. It's like what ha happens if you take Blood Simple and mix it with Fargo. And it just, it's so damn good the whole way through. And then it gets to the climax and they decide not to show the climax. And what, and what are we talking about? What climax? Yes. No, 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 because there was a climax. There, there. was it a was climax. It just up. all he's, happened off screen. I mean, you've got Josh Brolin. He's like, I'm sick of running. You, Honey, you go out and stay with your mom. I'm about to kick some ass. He does everything but cock a shotgun. And then we cut away to Tommy Lee Jones. And then we come back and, and, and we've missed everything. And it's like, w wait, what just happened? You're... What? It's You're almost kidding like, me. Yeah, it's almost like they told the camera crew to be there early the next day to shoot this big shootout, and the camera crew was in the wrong part of town. They just said, well, we ran out of money, so we got to go with what we got. <laughs> you just don't, you know, I understand that the Coen brothers like to break the rules, but you don't follow a character for 90% of your movie and then just end his story off screen. Let me tell you something, and I, please, bear witness anybody who hears this, if I ever see the Coen brothers in person, I'm slapping both those sons of bitches. Now, 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 now I, I do have to say, I've been getting email all week about this. This is exactly how the book went. This I, is apparent. Now, now, this is exactly the case of why when we adapt books, you're not always supposed to stick to the book. Because what works in a book doesn't work in a movie. And it does not work here. I told Leon that. I said, you know, this is one situation where I would have said some Hollywood executive should have come up and said, nah, we got to have an explosion or something no, at the end. You know? They did. They did. People said you can't end a movie like this, but it was one of those emperor. The emperor has no clothes oh, situations shit. where nobody wanted to tell the Coens, uh, dude, you can't do that. And anyone that did, they're like, no, 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 trust us. People will acknowledge it. They'll get it. It's genius. Yeah. Do, do, like, do y'all remember the last time this happened on this scale? It was the the, sequ the sequels to the Matrix. Oh, yeah. where, where they like, yeah. hey, let let them do what they're gonna do, and nobody come in and say nothing, and that went horribly wrong. It was like it was like the Hindenburg. That being said, the ultimate team, every director's, every you know creative team needs somebody that they trust to be able to tell them you're full shit, okay? <laughs> not just some suit who has no idea what they're doing and just looks at numbers. Somebody who understands both sides of it, right? That's what this movie needed. They needed somebody to say, you guys are fucking crazy. You can't end a movie like this. You just can't do it. I understand yeah. that you're trying to be artistic and whatever, but you know what? Me personally, I've read Cormac McCarthy's books and they're the same way. They're really beautiful and really well written. And then at the end you go, what in the fuck was that? Well, you know something? Damn. I, I know there's going to be a bunch of people. I, I, there's going to be a lot of people. Trust me. Who's going to, who, they're going to say this was the best movie of the, of the year. And you dummies are just, you wanted a Hollywood typical ending, and you don't get it. I don't I just, want I just, a Hollywood typical ending. I want an ending. I need the characters to finish their arc. You want me yeah. talking in intellectual terms? Finish your goddamn character now, arc. If you're if you're gonna say 
don't expect a Hollywood ending at the end of the movie. Don't give me a Hollywood movie. Th- don't thank me, you. Don't give me a character that I like, that I follow, that I'm sitting behind a car, heavy breathing as a madman is trying to kill me. Do not give me that movie that beat for beat works like every other great thriller and works as a perfectly executed thriller. And then out of the, the, the blue says, oh, you know what? Fuck convention. Let's throw that out the yeah. window. I would almost liken this to the ending on The Sopranos, that last episode, the ending there that left everybody like thinking like, what, it, did my TV go out or what the hell? And then that was it. And you can't tell me that wasn't a dissatisfying ending. No, you you, no. you want to speculate and say, well, maybe it was this and maybe it was that. You get to the ending of a movie, you shouldn't be saying, well, maybe, maybe my ass. It, no. it should be very clear what happened and this dropped the ball. That said, y'all saying two thirds, I would say three fourths of this movie is just brilliant. It is like the best movie I've seen. Oh, I, I almost don't yeah. even want to turn on it because it's just like, damn it, I want to see this again for the parts that I really enjoyed. I'd love to buy it and watch it up to a point, and I would get to that point and I would cut the movie off. I will say that these the, the Corn Brothers really, I mean, they are brilliant. You know, I, I would no, see that's the thing. I will sit up there and I will praise them. I will kiss their feet. I will rub their legs and I will slap the shit out of them after I'm done. But you know the thing. <laughs> but the, I you, see you that. You know, that sounds like a Friday night for you. Well, you know, yeah, I, I gotta see that. I've yeah. done it before. And I'll do it again. No, I mean, but you, I you're see right. The I mean, engraved invitation to the Cohen brothers. Oh, I'm, I'm gonna say, well, hey, <laughs> come here. Let me talk to you. No, they, they, they also be escorted out by security. <laughs> but no, I really have to say that these guys are brilliant. This movie, and I don't throw this around too often was pretty much flawless because they know how to direct scenes of tension. And this movie is just one long piece of tension. And it's very, you know, they take their time, they set it up, they keep it going slow to, that you wonder what's going to happen. And I, I don't know, man. I, I just, it just baffles me that they couldn't see that at the end that nobody told them like, wow, this was so great up until this point here. I mean, not only do they, they are just masters of holding that tension when they need to, when it's not tense, it's beautifully shot. And in between all that, just some of the most brilliant dialogue you could ever hear oh, in a so good. God, such great. Now, I'm curious to – I haven't read the book, but I'm curious to know how much is right from the book and how much their screenwriter like made up on his own to make it fit. But yeah, wow. There are parts where you're just sitting there and it's just a static shot of one guy talking like Tommy Lee Jones. And you're just sitting there marveling at his every word. But there's that shot of Javier Bardem – I mean that, that scene of Javier Bardem in, a, in the gas station. Oh, yeah. That, that dialogue is so crazy. But it, for some reason, it makes sense in the in this in in that scene. You're just so nervous through that whole scene. And yeah. How good is Javier Bardem? Oh, oh my man. God, is he incredible in this? Movie. Him and Tommy Lee Jones, Woody yeah. Harrelson is, no, is no, fantastic. Every, for that little oh, bit well, he's if on. We're going to be talking about everybody. I Josh just, Brolin. Josh Brolin, who was ne- the best we've ever seen. Josh Brolin is in that slap and tickle I fight. I never he had gave a shit about water in Into the Blue. <laughs> Remember that where yeah. he's underwater with Aquaman and rolling around? <laughs> oh yeah, no, no but scene next to this. But here he's actually <laughs> he's good. It's like wow, I actually care about this guy. I want to see this actor in other good movies. Everybody's good in a Coen Brothers film. That's one of the things, reason why everyone goes oh, the Coen Brothers because they know how to work with actors really well. They can take mm-hmm. just okay actors and get amazing performances out of them. Uh, one of the things they're great at doing is these little quirky roles. This movie's filled with characters that come in for five minutes and make you want to know more about them, but oh, too late, they're gone. Well, they have finally done something I thought they couldn't do because either they make a movie that I hate they make a movie that I love, and they managed to make a movie that I hate and love, and both in one. So, like I say, you know, I gotta, I gotta go and kiss him on the cheek, and I gotta whoop your ass afterwards. Well, it is one where, like, it, because the movie's so brilliant, it hurts that much more exactly. that the ending so lame. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So, it, I mean, you know, it, I'm, I'm, I'm so go ahead. It's, it's like having really incredible sex, and then having her, you know, just kind of let you pull out and. Jerk yourself. Why are you off okay? All right, I'm. A, I don't want to get this nasty with it now. Come on. Oh, you man. always want to get this. No, nasty well, with not it. with you. Like I don't. There. But I, you know, I will go as far as to say uh, I'm going to give it matinee because I, and I was believe me, I was going between like giving this like some old bullshit because of what they pulled. I'll give it the matinee, and I'm just going to say matinee because it is brilliant. I was so furious at the end of this. I mean, I was just seething because I was enjoying this more than any movie I'd seen this year up until a certain point with Josh Brolin, and from then on, you're just sitting there reeling at what happened, thinking, well, they're gonna they're gonna make it work at the end. And then they hit you twice as bad at the end, almost. I, 
I just had to sit and think about it all week, and I got to tell you, I'm still going matinee. Damn, you tearing up right now. They now, really hurt I, you. It made me mad because yeah. this is the, one of the best movie Cohen, that the Coen brothers have ever made, except for how they screwed it up. All right, but it is worth seeing in the theater because. Oh my God! Some of the most beautiful cinematography and acting that you've seen, and I don't know how long. All right. Yeah, I mean, on one end, it's better than sex. On the other end, it's some old bullshit. And if you do the math, it filters down to being matinee. Well, you know what? That is one of those rare movies I would have been willing to go like, man, it's better than sex. Yeah. But then you know you had to tease me. You know I couldn't. I couldn't climax. It's a penguin blowjob. Hey, we all go to strip clubs, okay? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I got a break from the pack here, guys. That's so different from me. But no, this is some old bullshit. No, I no that that ending. So uh, you don't make something that good and then ruin it. You know, you don't make a delicious meal and then just dump salt on it. And that's what this movie does. As good as the stuff is, hey, if you dig it, you know, maybe, maybe rental. You have to acknowledge the goodness in this movie. Okay. I, no, I, I did. I, I just will not allow this. Talk to you no. about the I would. No, I would you know like, what? Oh. Uh, I would like to bring up that you brought up Into the Blue, which I remember specifically you giving it a better rating just because of the last 10 minutes because of the Because the film. movie got really good. Yes, but 90% but, of this movie was really good. And I and only recommend it wasn't. to people who yes, like bad fight. movies. This Attack! Is, that, that was a movie that got better. My point is you gave it, it a higher gets... rating because of 10% of it. I don't think it's fair to give this a total wow. miss. I think, because I of think it absolutely is because <laughs> the total it's, it's, miss... He's got you beat on the math. The, the total. <laughs> I, this isn't a question of math. This is a question of you know they. So much of it is good, and I've sat here and talked to you guys. There's so much about this film that I love, but you don't screw up the ending. A great ending will make a bad movie better, and a terrible ending will make a great movie crap. And that's what happens here. I am never going to watch this film again. Yes, there, you will. No, I'm not. I challenge you on this. You no, will. No, I. You challenge me all you want. I'm not going to watch it again. The ending. I. I, I do not want to go through that. Well, I experience strap again. your ass down to a chair and you can't get up. You will watch this again. I'll pull a dude, Stanley and Kubrick, Kubrick and on you'll you. wake up the next morning taped to your bed watching Bratz, dude. Don't make. Don't hey, play hey, this hey, game man. Hey, 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 wait a minute hey. now. You don't have to go there with that. And, and I'm going to do a double feature on your ass with some daddy daycare action. Oh, right? oh don't damn, make man. Me get medieval on your That's ass. I'll call a couple of hard piping niggers down to bring. Oh shit! Now I know you're crazy, Leon. Get this motherfucker <laughs> <Yeah>. in. <laughs> hey man, we were just joking around. You had to get, take it to the next level. I had man. to quote Pulp Fiction on your ass. I'm sorry. Even in quoting Pulp Fiction, you can't say the N word if you're white. I discovered that the hard way. No, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, 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 we had to beat his ass. You know, you, you got one coming. <laughs> He's looking at me like I wish you would. <laughs> I wish you would. <laughs> it's like bring it. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> Dude. Speaking of speaking of bring it. Oh, you know what? Before we before oh, we get no, off on no, it, no, no, no. Am I, am I about to get served? No, not you. No, 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 not you at all. I want to say, you know, I, I know some people gonna hear this review, and you and your little hipster beret wearing ass, you gonna come up to me and tell me how good this movie. Look, this is the type of movie. Don't fuck with me on this, all right? Because the moment you come up here and try and tell me how wrong I am about this movie, I'm so angry about this movie. I'm going to slap the shit out of you. You have to explain, not just go, no, it was good. You don't understand. You just wanted a Hollywood ending. Okay, those things aren't true. Okay, we didn't just want a Hollywood ending. Your job is to explain how the ending was good and how it was meaningful. If you want to have that argument and, with me, you better come up with that ready. And I don't want to hear the word book anywhere in this fucking conversation. Yeah, it has nothing to do with it. Because I've been hearing that already. Well, did you read the book? Because that's what happens in the book. I don't care. This, I'm not a literary critic, okay? The minute I become a literary critic, we could talk about how the book ended. Right now, I'm a film critic. I saw the film. Film fucking sucked. Right. Or you just say like, oh, wow, I guess the book sucked then. <laughs> I just, wh whoever this person is, I end up attacking. I don't want y'all going nowhere. I want this to be like the Crips or something. I want y'all being around this person, kicking the shit out of them with me. <laughs> oh, yeah. We'll beat them no like problem. that copier in office space. Yep. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, you know we some movie nerds, man. You're going to end up dead like a hooker on the floor on my honeymoon. Damn, man. <laughs> oh, sorry. Did I not tell you all about yeah, that? No, yeah. <laughs> okay, goodbye.